What's up everyone? So today I'm going to be talking about a thing that I've been working on recently, uh, which is basically taking 2D pictures and making them 3D scenes. Recently I've gotten a bit into taking album covers and 3D-ifying them, basically just being able to make a full 3D appearing scene out of something that is just a 2D image. So today I'm going to be going over just basic stuff of how this can be done and I'm going to be doing it entirely in After Effects uh, so you guys can do this as well. Uh, but we're going to be using this picture of LeBron as he's dunking and we're basically just going to be animating this picture. We're going to be using 3D cameras, stuff like that. It might sound a little intimidating, but I promise it's actually not that difficult. So what I'm going to do first is just we're going to go ahead and make a clean slate of the background, which means we're going to cut out the hoop, we're going to cut out LeBron, and we're going to cut out the ref just so we can have the crowd, just the background. So let's create, I'm sorry, let's create a new composition. Let's just title it background crowd whatever so let's go ahead and try the content aware fill first just to see what happens so in order to do that we need to select our layer and we need to just make a mask around lebron it doesn't need to be anywhere near perfect i'm just going to create a little mask just around the edges so once we've created our mask what we want to do is we're first of all going to want to invert it and we can, let's just do one frame just to see if it works, but uh, we can go over here and once we have this selected, we can go over to content aware fill and we can create a fill layer and it's gonna do its magic and, okay, that's actually not bad. That's not too bad. So as you can see, it what basically what it does is it just uses surrounding pixels and tries to take its best guess at what that would look like. For all intents and purposes, this is good enough. We're gonna go ahead and use this. Um, and so now we're gonna do that to the hoop up here and we're going to do it to the ref as well so here is what our final product would look like in terms of the background so now let's do the animation for lebron himself so in order to do that we're going to create another composition we'll just title this one lebron and we're gonna take our image, and now we're gonna cut out LeBron. This time we are gonna to wanna to do a better job with the mask. While I'm doing this, I should mention that if you prefer to do this kind of work, like masking and stuff like that, if you prefer to do this kind of stuff in Photoshop, you totally can. Um, I've just always used After Effects, and that's just what I feel most comfortable in, so that's why I'm doing it right now. However, Photoshop in this sense would definitely speed up this process. Okay, now that we have LeBron cut out, we're gonna go ahead and do any form of animation or anything that we would want to do to this cutout. So there's two ways we could do it, but I think we're gonna go ahead and try using the puppet position tool, which is what this little uh, kind of thumbtack thing is up here. So let's start off with his legs. So we're going to put an anchor point uh, here near both of his knees and then we're going to put one down here for his feet and you can see we now have the ability to position his legs. Uh, we're just going to animate it ever so slightly. Alright so this is how it looks after just doing the legs. Now another thing to keep in mind is there's only three anchor points which is right here, right here, and one down here. And so his upper body is moving because we don't have any anchor points up here. Let's add another one right here by his shoulder, another one by his elbow, and then his hand as well. So I, added, I decided to add one by his wrist and one on the ball because I wanted a little bit more, more motion of him kind of winding his hand back. These two, we're going to put a keyframe for both here, and we're going to go to our very last frame, and we're going to have the ball kind of coming back like that. So now that we've done that, we can affect the position and the scale. And we can just kind of go to our last frame, first of all. And then we can say, okay, he's moved up to the side a little bit and scaled up maybe twice, just a little bit. So now, once again, it just gives that subtle feeling of motion. And we can put LeBron back in here. Not bad looking. Obviously, we still need to add some things, but that's a pretty good start. So after making a cutout of the hoop, you can see, let me put that back, you can see that there's still a bunch of holes in there. 
In order to take care of those holes, what you can do is duplicate the layer. Oh, yeah, let me just show you. Duplicate the layer, and you can delete this current mask that we have, and you can create a mask in, let's say, the hold areas, like right here. like this and then go to our layer below which is just the hoop and go to alpha inverted mat and that's going to cut it out and this is a little bit of a tedious process once again i would recommend actually doing this if you were going to do this to do it in uh, photoshop because it's going to be a lot easier all right so as you can see i did a crap job but you know whatever uh, for all intents and purposes, this is going to be plenty good enough. Uh, so now that we have this taken care of, we can go back to our main one and bring in the hoop and boom, there you go. As you can see, we now have the hoop as well. So last thing is we just need to get the ref and then we'll be all done. Okay, so I just went ahead and just took care of the whole ref. But now that we have all of our different layers uh, taken care of, we can finally get into the 3D part and the camera part. So if you try and go up here, click layer, new camera, you'll get this pop-up that shows where our camera is gonna look like. So if you do it without turning 3D on for these layers, it'll say warning camera can only affect 3D layers, that's fine. What you gotta do is just go to all of our layers here and click on there and drag down. If you don't see that, you probably see this screen. Just go to the bottom here. It says toggle switches slash modes. Click that and then you can see that. So what we can do is switch our view. I normally do horizontal. And what this is showing us is this is our camera and this is what our camera sees. And these are all our images down here. Now they're all stacked on top of each other because we haven't moved them at all. But we need to do is we need to place them as if they were actual assets inside of an image, right? So in this image, we can see LeBron and the hoop are in theory closest because they're in focus. The ref is kind of a medium distance back. We know he's on the court somewhere. And then we have the crowd in the background. So now we need to position these images as if that is how we they really are relative to the camera. So I'll start with the background and let's scoot it back. And we're gonna scoot it back a decent ways. And as you notice, the farther we move it back, uh, obviously it no longer takes up the entire screen. So we need to just go down here to transform and just scale it up until it matches our screen. We'll make it a little bit bigger. Right, so right around there is fine. So now we need to say, let's say we want to position the ref next. So we'll put the ref right about there, right around there maybe. Cause he's not, actually we'll put it right there. Cause he's not quite in the crowd. He's still somewhat on the court, so he's sort of close, um, but he's definitely not as close as LeBron in the hoop bar. And same with the same thing with the ref. We're just gonna scale that up until he kind of fits back where he was. And up here we have all these different controls to help us control the camera. So we're gonna use this one. And as you can see, as we zoom in with the camera, LeBron in the hoop move differently. From the background so now that we have all this we need to take care of any form of animating that we want to do with the camera so let's say we want the camera to swoop in kind of like uh it's zoomed out and then it swoops in and slows down maybe zooms in a bit towards lebron and then stops and comes back out we'll say that's what we want to do I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these. So we're going to zoom it out. Now you notice you say, okay, this looks terrible because we have all this empty space. So we can go, let's go to our background and go up to our effects and type in motion tile, drag and drop this on in here. And what we want to switch our output width, select, put that to like 500, same thing with the height, 500, and we can mirror the edges and we get a kind of infinite look effect. Now, obviously this doesn't look super good <laughs> as of yet because of the fact that, you know, it just looks odd, but it's okay because the camera's gonna be in motion. So now let's say, let's go maybe that much ahead. And we're gonna zoom our camera 
way back in. And we're gonna press F9. We're gonna press F9 on this one again, these two keyframes. And if we select the both and then go right here to our graph editor, we can see the velocity. So we want this to come in kind of quick. Basically just copy this. It's gonna end up looking something like that. And that means our camera is gonna come in fast and it's gonna slow down the closer we get. And on the next frame, we're gonna add another keyframe and we're gonna have it start to go up. We're gonna have it start to zoom in. And go up a little bit more towards LeBron. Kind of his center mass. And over to the side a little bit. And we're gonna have it zoom way back out again. Oops. Like way out. Something like that, something ridiculous. And we can go into our graph editor again. This time we're gonna invert it to look something like that. Okay, so after a little bit of refining, we get something that looks like this. Not too bad, I get some good motion. It still looks a little odd though. So one of the things I like to do as well is do some camera rotation. So when it's coming in, maybe it's to the side like this. And then as we get zoomed in, it comes back to normal. And I'll do the same thing, select both F9. And we'll sort of do the same kind of idea with the camera rotation. Okay, and so one of the last things we're gonna do is go to our camera options and we're finally gonna mess around with our depth of field. So we're gonna turn it on. So we're gonna double click on the camera again and this f-stop that we had, I'm gonna change this to 2.8. And we're going to change our blur to 100%. We want the background to be pretty decently blurred. And so we're going to essentially just mess around with the focus distance. As you can see, that's this bar right here. And we're going to have this number kind of small, maybe 1500, uh, maybe even less, maybe like 500. So as it comes in, LeBron is blurred. And then right around here, maybe we get him into focus. And now keep in mind, once again, we want LeBron to be in focus. So this picture right here, we want that to be the thing that's in focus. So we want to keep this, our bar for focus right on LeBron. If you wanted to add a little bit of motion, some people really like the handheld effect, me being one of those people is you can go over here and if you're holding down alt left click onto this push caps lock if you have like a pop-up uh, and you can type in a wiggle and then you're going to have parentheses and you're going to be typing in two numbers and so the first one is going to be first one's frequency and so i'm just letting you know right now you're probably going not going to be much higher than single digit numbers in fact it'll probably be like i don't know maybe like one and then the second number is going to be the size of the shakes, like basically the farthest out it could possibly be. And for a handheld type of thing, you're gonna to wanna to go with like three or something. Basically, this just makes the camera kind of, it'll give us effect of randomly moving at a frequency of one in positions, adjusting these no more than three in any one direction. And so if, if we let this render out, I can show you how it looks. And you can see it adds just a little bit of like a handheld kind of random movement effect. So with all this taken care of, one of the last things I like to do just as icing on the cake is add motion blur to all the clips. As you can see, it gives it this really nice kind of just natural like camera, like an actual camera is moving through kind of effect. If you want to adjust how much blur you get, go to composition, composition settings, go to advanced. And here you have all sorts of uh, things that you could want for your for uh, motion blur. So shutter angle, keep in mind, so zero is going to be nothing. You're not going to get any motion blur. The highest on an actual camera would be 360 degrees. I put it at 180 because it's just a nice kind of natural look. 
All right, so all rendered out. This is how it ends up looking. Uh, pretty basic, nothing super special about it, but pretty cool nonetheless. You could just take a 2D image and really make it come to life, so. So yeah, if you're at all interested in seeing some of the stuff that I've done, be sure to check out my TikTok. I'll put the clips up here, but I don't want to put the audio up just because of copyright purposes. So if you want to see the full thing, check out my TikTok. I'll leave it in the uh, description below. And uh, yeah, that'll be that for uh, this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Hopefully this was helpful. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.